Brachy therapy literally means shock therapy in Greek, which refers to the distance between the radiation source and the treatment target. It follows the inverse square law, referring to exposure rate being directly proportional to 1 by r square, that is, the distance from the source, which means that the dose delivered is specifically targeted to the tumor with least effect on the adjacent normal tissues. Radium, discovered in 1898, was the first isotope used in brachytherapy, and Duchman in 1915 was the first to implant radium capsules in fraction doses. However, brachytherapy for ocular tumors was successfully pioneered by R. Foster Moore, who used radon seeds for interstitial therapy for choroidal sarcoma by intraocular insertion. H. P. Stellard used radon for treating retinoblastoma and in 1960s introduced cobalt-60 episcleral plaques for the treatment of choroidal melanoma. In 1964, in Europe, Professor Peter Lamich introduced the ruthenium applicators. Celi et al. first used iodine in 1976 to treat ophthalmic tumors and the successful transition to iodine plaques was led by Rotman and Packer. The Collaborative Ocular Melanoma Study, COMS, in 1986 was a landmark randomized clinical trial demonstrating comparable control rates between surgical enucleation and iodine plaque brachytherapy for medium-sized tumors, thus promoting the use of plaque brachytherapy with regular updates. Eventually, a meticulous team of American Brachytherapy Society Ophthalmic Oncology Task Force laid down the protocols for plaque brachytherapy in ocular tumors and technology has made planning and execution way easier over the years. The radionuclides used for brachytherapy for ocular tumors are iodine, palladium, cesium, ruthenium and strontium, out of which the low photon energy seeds, iodine, palladium, cesium are photon emitters and ruthenium and strontium are solid beta emitters. A clear knowledge of radiological characteristics of radionuclides used for plaque brachytherapy is recommended, which helps in planning and choosing the appropriate plaque for the dosimetry calculations. Such radioisotopes decay into more stable forms and release ionizing radiation, which causes double-stranded DNA breakage and eventually cell death. The radioactive material in ruthenium plaques is electrodeposited on a thin silver foil mounted between a 0.7 mm silver backing and a 0.1 mm silver window, making the thickness to be 1 mm, thus providing a handy design of reusable plaques. Whereas the iodine plaque consists of 0.05 mm titanium tubes with multiple iodine seeds with welded ends for anisotropic dose distribution. The titanium aids in absorbing any electrons or LX rays with small insignificant energies. Plaque brachytherapy has been successfully utilized for the treatment of various ocular tumors, including surface neoplasms like ocular surface squamous neoplasia, conjunctival melanoma, and intraocular tumors like uveal melanoma, retinal and choroidal hemangioma, retinoblastoma, ocular metastasis, and even vasoproliferative retinal tumors. As per the consensus of American Brachytherapy Society Ophthalmic Oncology Task Force, plaque procedures should be performed in specialized centers with expertise in ophthalmic brachytherapy, comprising of a subspecialty trained plaque surgeon, a radiation oncologist, and a medical physicist. The steps comprising of plaque brachytherapy treatment include a clear-cut clinical diagnosis, tumor size assessment, photographic and diagrammatic documentation, dosimetry planning, surgical insertion of plaque for the required duration, and a regular follow-up and subsequent documentation of tumor dimensions and outcome. Explaining with an example, here is a case of a 32-year-old female who presented with blurring of vision in the left eye for five months with the best corrected visual acuity of counting fingers close to face. Fundus examination revealed a well-defined, elevated reddish lesion, a 
approximately 11 by 9 by 6 mm in size with surrounding subretinal fluid involving the macula with diffuse exudates. A diagnosis of choroidal hemangioma was made and the ultrasonography B scan confirmed the clinical findings revealing a lesion with maximum height of 5.69 mm and base of 11.31 mm which confirmed her as an ideal case for plaque brachytherapy. 3D imaging such as CT or MRI can also be used to provide a more accurate model of the eye. A clear photographic and diagrammatic documentation was done. Softwares like Brachydose and Plaque Simulator use planar reconstructions of the imaging to construct two-dimensional and three-dimensional models of the affected eye, plaque, tumor, and dose distribution for the dosimetry planning. The 3D eye model can be mapped onto its own coordinate system and can be used to generate surgical suture coordinates for the position of the suture eyelids of the plaque on the outer surface of the sclera. In our case, as per the dose calculations at 6 mm depth and dose of 3500 centigrade, a dose rate of 169.08 centigrade per hour was calculated. Intraoperatively, the tumor is reassessed to confirm the eye and the findings. The assessment of site of placement can be done by the following methods. Conjunctival peritomy was performed as per the clock hours involved. Blunt dissection was performed and adequate space was made for housing the active hot plaque. After marking the suture site from the limbus as per the dimensions of the tumor and distance from the optic nerve, skeletal sutures were carefully passed. Notch plaque was placed and sutured over the sclera carefully and conjunctiva was closed. A regular follow-up is mandatory for the comparative assessment of tumor size from baseline and documentation of the outcome is recommended photographically and ultrasonographically. In our case, at the final follow-up of 5 months, there was complete resolution of the lesion and subretinal fluid with minimal scarring at the site. Therefore, the importance of the advent of plaque brachytherapy in the world of ocular tumors has increased globe salvage rates by manifold and a proper evaluation, planning and execution is advocated to ensure better survival, local tumor control and visual outcome. It is truly said that revolutions never go backward and the best example happens to be of plaque brachytherapy radiating positivity in the world of ocular oncology.